Good evening. You are tuning in to our Wani Tonight with me, Cynthia Ng. Less than 12 hours before voters go to the polls in the six state elections. Now, Ilham Center has predicted a status quo result on its survey of voters and the ongoing campaign. According to the think tank, the Pakatan Harapan Barisan National Pact will continue to helm Selangor, Penang and Negeri Sembilan, while Kedah, Kelantan and Trunganu will remain under Perikatan National. The survey revealed that in Selangor, PH has non-Malay voters as their permanent deposit, as it said that PN's aggressive campaign scares this segment. PN, meanwhile, it said, has the opportunity to increase seats in the Malay majority seats in Selangor, but it will not be sufficient to form the state government. In the Grismilan, Ilham Centre predicted that it will be difficult for PN to challenge PHBN in the Grismilan. While in Penang, it said that PHBN is in full control, with PN's potential for victory concentrated in the Malay majority. In Kelantan and Trungganu, the failure of PHBN to represent strong candidates and running serious campaigns meant PN would have an easy path to victory. In Kedah, it predicted that PHBN's decision to attack caretaker Menteri Besar Dato Sri Mohamad Sanusi Manno throughout the campaign had backfired and may cost them several seats in the state. In terms of transferability of votes, Ilham Centre has also predicted that between 27 to 58 percent of AMNO supporters will vote for PN. As for most young voters between 18 and 25 years old, the survey found that they still favour PN despite various efforts of the unity government to win their support. The survey of nearly 2,300 respondents was conducted between July 28 until August 8. Now, we talked to political analyst Professor James Chin about how he thinks the results will play out. He delves into the sentiments at hand and if there is a potential shift in state seat distribution. A lot of people will argue that this coming Saturday you will see a setter score, three states for Pakatan, stroke BN, and three states for uh, Perikatan, but that is not how you look at it. The proper way to look at the results is you look at the pattern of the Malay voters. So for example, you can have status quo, three states to either side, but if Perikatan made major inroads into, for example, Selangor, Negeri Sembilan, and Penang, and that they hold on uh, you know, to massive majorities in Trenganu, uh, Kelantan, and Kedah, sweep through all those three Malay heartland states, then I'll argue that the federal government becomes unstable because what will happen after that is that Perikatan will keep saying that this government cannot be stable because the majority of the people, the Malay people, do not support this government. So I expect uh, uh, Perikatan to actually increase their seats in Kedah. I expect them to make uh, some inway into Selangor and some inway into Penang. Negeri Semilang, I think, is a bit hard for them to take, but I expect them to sweep through Kelantan and Trenganu. So basically, you have to look at the Malay voting pattern. Uh, as long as just win a small percentage of seats in Selangor, small percentage of seats in, in Penang, uh, that should not be a problem. James also discusses the likely impact, if any, of tomorrow's state election results on the federal government. There is no direct link between the results of this upcoming uh, election on Saturday and the federal government. But however, if, for example, the unity government does badly, say they lose one or two states to Perikatan, then it is quite clear that uh, there will be tremendous pressure on Anwar Ibrahim to change his government and change government policies. His government will definitely be becoming more unstable. And if there's going to be a change at the federal level, it will not be immediate. It will take a couple of months while people maneuver in the background. So there will not be any immediate changes. But if unity government does very, very badly, especially among Malay voters, uh, you will have political instability. And this political instability may lead to a change in the federal government, say in the next 12 months. He also discusses the likely stance that parties in Borneo, such as Gabungan Parti Sarawak, GPS, and Gabungan Rakyat Sabah, GRS, will take following the outcome of the state elections on Saturday. Uh, the way to understand East Malaysia is that they want to be part of the federal government, but they also want a stable federal government. So, for example, if Anwar Ibrahim lose the Malay vote this Saturday 
and the government become unstable, there is really no reason for GPS or GRS to stay in. If somebody else can put together a better coalition, a more stable coalition, GPS and GRS will be quite happy to join that new coalition. The past leadership has promised to name a new Menteri Besar and deputy in Kelantan if the party returns to power tomorrow. As for Kedah and Trengganu, past Secretary General Datuk Sri Takyudin Hassan said Datuk Sri Muhammad Sanusi Madnor and Ahmad Samsri Mokta would be retained as Menteri Besar respectively. However, the decisions would still need the consent of the Sultans. Jawatan Timba Menteri Besar dan Timbalan Menteri Besar Kelantan yang akan ditawarkan selepas uh, pilihan raya negeri nanti tidak dinamakan bagi menghormati mandat rakyat dan juga bagi menghormati kuasa prerogatif atau kuasa mutlak ke bawah duli yang maha mulia Sultan Kelantan dalam hal pelantikan Menteri Besar Kelantan dan Timbalan Menteri Besar Kelantan. Tak Yudin said Kelantan's Menteri Besar and his deputy will be someone known for their Islamic scholarship and technocratic background, respectively. The outgoing Kelantan Menteri Besar is Datuk Ahmad Yaakob with Datuk Muhammad Amar Nik Abdullah as his deputy. 45 state seats are up for grabs tomorrow. While PAS is expected to retain control of the state, all eyes will be on Barisan National to see if they can defend theirs. In the last state elections in 2018, held concurrently with the 14th general election, PAS won 37 seats and Bersatu won one seat. The remaining seven seats were won by BN. Selangor Menteri Besar Amiruddin Shari has declared Monday a public holiday if the Pakatan Harapan Barisan National Pact wins the state elections tomorrow. He also promised that five measures proposed by BNPH in its manifesto will be fulfilled within 100 days. Among the 100-day promises, the state government will distribute 1,000 ringgit to 5,000 women to reduce their childcare costs, while assessment tax for houses in villages and low-cost homes will also be waived. He said 1,000 students in Salango universities would be given book vouchers worth 200 ringgit each, while allowances for all imams and muezzins in the state would be increased. 500 farmers, party farmers and fishermen will also receive 1,000 ringgit incentives. Selango has been governed by PH since 2008. Meanwhile, the Trunganu government declared Sunday, August 13, a public holiday in conjunction with the six state elections. Menteri Besar Datuk Sri Ahmad Samsuri Mokhtar said this was to allow those working in Trunganu to return to their hometowns and vote. He added that the announcement also takes into account the workload of civil servants who will be assisting the election commission until late at night on polling day. The government aims to raise the salaries of civil servants slightly through Budget 2024 to be tabled in Parliament in October. Prime Minister Datu Sri Anwar Ibrahim says this is, however, a temporary measure until a comprehensive study on the salary and retirement scheme for civil servants is complete, which is expected next year. Anu explained that the salary scheme for civil servants must be reviewed every 10 years and was due for a review two years ago. He added that the increment of salaries will depend on the government's financial situation. The Prime Minister also said a slight increment should be given due to inflation. Anua, who is also Finance Minister, said the matter was looked into after a meeting with the Chief Secretary of Government, the Treasury Secretary General and the Public Service Department. A childcare centre in Sabah embroiled in a child abuse incident has issued an apology after a viral clip showed one of its caregivers mistreating a four-year-old boy at the school. The centre will also temporarily suspend their operations until further notice to assist authorities in investigations. The 27-year-old woman caregiver who was arrested on Wednesday has been remanded for a week from Friday. A two-minute clip of the alleged incident had gone viral since Wednesday evening. It showed a woman slapping and hitting a child multiple times, including with a metal object. She is also seen pulling his hair in front of other children at the centre. 
Following the incident, State Community Development and People's Wellbeing Ministry said that all kindergarten and daycare operators in Sabah are required to install CCTVs in their premises before renewing their licenses. We'll go for a quick break. Stay tuned for more. Welcome back. Singapore will hold a presidential election on September 1st if more than one candidate is nominated to run for the post. However, the government said that if there is only one candidate on nomination day on August 22nd, he or she will be declared president-elect. Singapore's presidential election this year will be open to all ethnic groups, unlike the last time in 2017, when the post was controversially reserved for those of Malay ethnicity. Current President Halima Yaakob, Singapore's first woman president, said she will not run for re-election as her term ends on September 13th. In 2017, Parliament amended the constitution to reserve the presidency for a member of a particular ethnic group if no one from that group had been president for five six-year terms. In Singapore's 3.5 million citizens, about three-quarters are Chinese, 12.5% Malay and 9% Indian, with the rest classified as Eurasians. At least 55 people have died in the wildfires that tore through the Hawaiian island of Maui. Authorities warned that the death toll is likely to rise. As many as 1,000 people are still reported missing on the island, although many could be out of reach due to communication lines being cut off. Hawaii, Hawaii Governor Josh Green had described the wildfires as the greatest natural disaster in the state's history. Uh, was likely the largest natural disaster in Hawaii state history. We are seeing loss of life here. As you know, uh, the number has been rising and we will continue to see loss of life. We also have seen many hundreds of homes uh, destroyed. And that's going to take a great deal of time to recover from. But that's why we come together. Locals are still coming to terms with the full extent of the devastation that destroyed the resort town of Lahaina. Officials estimate that the damage and destruction will take many years and billions of dollars to rebuild. Thousands have been left homeless, with as many as 1,000 buildings damaged or destroyed. Firefighters are still battling to contain the wildfires, which began on Tuesday and were fueled by Hurricane Dora's passing winds. U.S. President Joe Biden has declared the fires a major disaster, meaning the federal government will provide rescue and recovery funds. Russia has launched its first moon mission in almost 50 years. It aims to be the first nation to make a soft landing on the lunar south pole, a region believed to hold coveted pockets of water ice. A rocket carrying a lunar landing craft blasted off from the Vostochny spaceport in the far eastern Amar region on Friday. Russia's space agency said the lander is due to touch down on the moon on August 23rd. The Russian lunar mission is racing against India, which sent up its Chandrayaan-3 lunar lander last month. Major powers such as the United States, China, India, Japan and the European Union have all been probing the moon in recent years. A Japanese lunar landing failed last year, while Israeli and Indian missions failed in 2019. No country has made a soft landing on the South Pole. That wraps up our Wani tonight. I am Cynthia Ng. Thank you for watching and good night.